So I've been using my Keith Titanium fry pan now for a couple of months, and I think I'm ready to give you my thoughts on it. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Keith for sending me this fry pan along with a few other items that I previewed some months ago. And I have been using this on a regular enough basis that I can give you some thoughts and some of my experiences with it. But what I thought I would do is give you some close-ups while I go over the specifications. All right, let's start with the specifications for the Keith Titanium fry pan. So I consider this an eight inch fry pan, although the exact measurement is 7.9 inches by 1.9 inches high, which is 201 by 48 millimeters. Here's the cool part about it. Six ounces, mere six ounces for this fry pan or 172 grams. It does have a rated capacity so that it can hold 33.8 fluid ounces or a full one liter, but I'm not quite sure how I'd go about doing that in here. So just giving you some look at it, you can see that I have used it over fire, not a lot, but a few times. Very, very simple operation. Squeeze together here to open the handle up and a locking bar that slides down that prevents it from collapsing on you. So just a very, very simple little fry pan. And yes, it does come with a stuff sack, just like all the other Keith items, nice, simple stuff sack, also lightweight. Now I wanna share with you what I have been carrying this with so that I can make more of a system out of it. And that is a aluminum pie plate. Well, it's not even a pie plate. I think it might have been an eating plate at one time, part of some set, but I did pick this up at the thrift store and I've had it for some time and I've actually used this as a fry pan by itself. I wouldn't call it a great success, but it can be used as a fry pan. So if I did need a second fry pan, I could use it that way. But what I liked about it is that it sits inside of the Keith Titanium fry pan without really adding any extra bolt. A little bit of weight, but it's aluminum, so it's not gonna be very heavy at all. And the cool thing is, is now I have an eating plate and a lid. It is just the size of the fry pan, so it doesn't work out as well as some of the uh, combinations I have, but I can still use it this way. So I can use it as a bit of an oven, more to just to retain heat in the fry pan than as an oven, because I don't think we have the depth top to bottom to really bake things in with this. All right, so let me put that aside. Now, what I'd like to do is talk for a few minutes about my experiences using this fry pan, both over a gas stove and over a fire. And uh, well, here's the thing. Most people shy away from using titanium fry pans because of the reputation they have of things sticking in them. And it's a wet reputation that's well deserved. The, the things will stick in these most of the time, if not used to their best ability. And what I mean by that is that there are techniques that you can use with your titanium fry pan, which will reduce, I won't say eliminate, but reduce the likelihood of things sticking. And I'll give you, for instance, when I use this over a fire uh, in a stove, that I was able to make an omelet in this fry pan. And literally after a few minutes, I was able just to move the omelet around inside the fry pan without any sticking, meaning almost virtually no cleanup. Of course, you still have to wipe it out, maybe wash it down, but you're not scraping trying to get burnt material off of the bottom. So there is a series of techniques that will help you reduce the chances of things burning and sticking in a fry pan like this. And those same techniques will apply to every type of fry pan for that matter, regardless if it's a well-seasoned cast iron or a well-seasoned carbon steel or an anodized aluminum or stainless steel or titanium, they can all have things stick if they're not used properly. And I know that sounds like heresy to people with their cast iron. Don't get me wrong. I love my cast iron but it's still about technique as much as it is about seasoning. Speaking of seasoning, you can probably see some staining inside of the fry pan here. That's actually seasoning that's starting to take place because of course with a fry pan like this, I do cook with oil, usually olive oil, but also with ghee, depending on how hot or what it is I'm cooking. And titanium will take a seasoning. Yes, it will. Not a good one, and it won't last long, but it will take a seasoning somewhat similar to what you can do with anodized aluminum. 
Honestly, I wouldn't count on the seasoning to prevent things from sticking. You have to go back to the technique. Now, I'll only talk for a second about what that technique is because I plan on making a full video on how you can keep things sticking regardless of what fry pan or pot you're using for that matter. But number one is choosing your heat source. So if you're using one of those ultra tiny little gas canister stoves, the one that have the three prongs and are very tiny, uh, you're really going to have a hard time to keep things from sticking because they concentrate a whole lot of heat into a very small area on the bottom of the pan. Titanium is terrible for uh, heat uh, moving across through the metal. It does not conduct heat well at all. In fact, of all the metals that we use out here in the woods, this is the worst. It's ultra lightweight because it's ultra strong and ultra thin, but that even contributes to that same issue. So being a metal that does not conduct well and is very thin, no wonder you get hot spots right in the center if you're using a very, very small stove. How do you get around that? use a stove with a wider spread of fame, uh, flame. That is, would, would be my first recommendation. Better yet, use it over wood fire if you can, because usually your wood fire is going to cover more of the surface of the, of the uh, bottom of the pan. If you can't use a smaller stove or a larger stove with a larger flame pattern, then at least keep this moving over the flame so you don't concentrate it in any one area. You're really going to have to be an active participant in your cooking. You may have to lift the pan off of the flame he may have to watch and make sure that the heat is moved all around. And uh, yeah, that's just a couple of the techniques. We could talk about other ones now, but I think I'll save that for the for full video because really, look how simple this is. This is just an ultra light titanium fry pan, which you can use for cooking without things sticking. Again, it's just a matter of technique. All right, just a quick review of the Keith titanium fry pan and my experiences with it. You know, Honestly, this is not something I take with me all the time. I have other fry pans that are easier to ensure things don't get stuck in them. As I mentioned, you can prevent or at least reduce the chances of things sticking in this fry pan if you use correct technique. But honestly, it's a bit harder than it would be with something like cast iron. Not that I'm going to carry cast iron out into the woods, but I have other fry pans like stainless steel, which are easier to keep things from sticking in, which are a good compromise as far as weight and strength goes. Still, if I'm looking for just the lightest combination that I can get to take out on any given day, this will be the one that I reach for. Okay, high quality item, super simple, super bomb proof, and if you know how to use it properly, it'll work as is intended to be. All right, if you have any comments or questions, I'd ask you to put them in the comments section below. I will share, of course, the information, the specifications, and where you can purchase this uh, fry pan in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore, and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.